All right, tonight I just wanted to take a look at an updated panel. Uh, I'm using a combination of action tiles and sharp tools. Most of the action tiles panels around my house control smart things, and then sharp tools controls Hubitat. Now I know sharp things can control both, but most of my devices are still on smart things. Uh, the big thing that I have on Hubitat is harmony. So smart things, I'm sorry, sharp tools does a really good job of controlling harmony through Hubitat. And it works a lot better than it does in smart things in my experience. It's a lot faster. The status on the virtual switches are also updated much, much quicker. Um, so let's just take a look real quick here. This is an action tiles panel. This lives in the hallway next to my thermostat and the light switch. Um, I've got a handful of routines across the top and the time. Um, TV lighting turns off basically all the lights downstairs and all the lights upstairs except for some of the lights in the living room. So that way we've still got some lighting but everything else is dark. Playroom off turns off the playroom lights. Morning kicks off my morning routine which disarms the alarm and turns on a couple of lights but it's a web core piston so it's got a couple safeties in there. Um, Basically, as long as all the doors have remained closed and the motion sensors in the living spaces have remained inactive for, I think, 10 minutes, it'll disarm the alarm. The idea behind that being that if the alarm were triggered or tripped, it would go off in a minute or so. So I know that I'm not just going to be able to let, or somebody's not going to be able to walk in and disarm the alarm that way. And then I've got the alarm control next to the clock, which just controls the smart home monitor. And then armed home, um, away mode, and bedtime, just a couple of different modes. And then I've got door locks, garage door, door statuses. And then this is my Nest Hello camera. Uh, there's actually a way, I'll see if I can find the link for it, uh, maybe put it in the description, where you can view your Nest Hello status through action tiles. Uh, which is really handy, I think, because I can walk by here and see who's walking up to the front door and decide if I want to go uh, open the door, if it's somebody that I'm expecting or somebody that I know or if it's somebody trying to sell me something. Next to that, where it says kitchen, that's the control for one of my Sonos speakers. And then radar to the right of that. That block of four tiles next to that is how I can control my Xiaomi vacuums from smart things. It's very indirect. It's kind of a bit of a workaround. I've got another video on that that you can check out, but basically it's a simulated switch that turns on, and then when that turns on, my Echo device uh, runs an automation that turns on the vacuum through the Xiaomi skill. It's really cool. It works really well because this way I can schedule cleanings through WebCore pistons, and then if I want to turn off a schedule, I just turn off that schedule virtual switch. Um, it'll run in the morning. It's scheduled to run in the morning three days a week, but if for whatever reason I don't want it to run the next morning, I just turn off that simulated switch before I go to bed that night, and it doesn't run in the morning, which is so much easier than getting out the app, going into the settings of the vacuum, adjusting the schedule for the vacuum, and then remembering to come back and turn it back on. And then across the bottom here, there's shortcuts that you can use to open apps through Android. I don't know how to do it through iOS. Uh, there's a lot of resources out there to find out how to do it through Android, but that's something else I'll try and put in the description or in the comments. But from here I can open Harmony, um, and it's connecting to one of my five hubs, because uh, I... Well, it's not connecting, because I might be having... Oh, there's three of them. Um, issues. But I can also come right here, open Spotify, I can open Sonos. Oh, damn it. Hit back one too many times. Um, and then my Sonos player controls. This is just another Action Tiles panel where I've got five of my speakers here, and then just a forecast and a radar and a clock. These are kind of just fillers. I don't like having a bunch of empty panels, it just doesn't look right to me. So I at least put some fillers in there. And then this home button is just a back button. Um, it's I don't know the specifics behind it because I'm not a developer, but I think it's just a Java uh, code, if you will, that goes back to the previous screen. So I just have that on a bunch of different panels. 
So you hit that and it goes back to where you came from. So that way instead of having to link four panels to four other panels, I just link one panel to three other panels and then put a back button on those three panels. And it goes back to the main one. And then CCTV. Uh, this is all managed through Blue Iris, which is running on a computer 24-7. So I've got all my PoE cameras connected. I think this is a problem with the resources on the Fire 10. It just doesn't have the juice to pull up eight cameras at a time. Um, usually, anyway. I just restarted this maybe 20 minutes ago. I left it off for about 45 minutes because I was having charger problems. So I want to make sure the battery was full. So I know the cache is cleared. Everything that's temporary is cleared out, but it still doesn't load all the cameras. Um, which isn't a big deal. I don't use this screen very often. So it really doesn't bother me too much. And then well, I've got these two here. The TV activities and the music. These are actually something I just set up today. These are links to Sharp Tools panels, or dashboards, I guess they're called dashboards and Sharp Tools. And then these link to my Harmony activities. And I like using Sharp Tools for Harmony through Hubitat just because it's so much faster and so much more responsive. Um, uh, you can see I've got five different hubs. One of them is just dedicated to music because I was tired of starting a music activity and turning off a TV uh, which is probably weird to some people, but a lot of the time if I've got music going, I'm still watching a game or something like that where I still want to have the video without ending the activity and I didn't have to go through changing the power settings on all the activities. It was just a lot easier. Got another hub on sale for 50 bucks, so I moved all of my music activities over to that one. So this is all the, the video-related activities. Um, I've got two hubs in the living room, so I can control the antenna, the left TV, the smart TV, the fire TV, and the Xbox. I've got a TV on the deck, so I've got a spare input and the deck TV, playroom TV, playroom Chromecast, a um, bunch of activities here. I don't really want to go through all of them, just waste everybody's time. So then I hit the back button, and then just like before, it goes back to the previous screen, just the pre previous page you were on. And then when we go here to music, this is another Sharp Tools panel. It's just a, a URL, a shortcut that I added to Action Tiles because Action Tiles just opens the link. And since it's another web interface, it's really cool. It doesn't have to worry about opening an app, which you can do, but it's just a little bit more difficult. So then these are all the music activities that I've got. Most of them are downstairs. Down On the main floor, I've got Sonos speakers in the dining room, the living room, the kitchen, um, the master bedroom, and then I've got one in the garage, one on the deck, and then one upstairs in the playroom. So I've got various activities here that I can start just by the touch of a button, a um, bunch of different activities. I've got a couple for the deck, so if we're sitting out on the deck watching TV or making dinner or whatever, I can do that. And then again, just like you can in Sharp Tools, I'm sorry, in Action Tiles, since it's not specific to the interface that's running, it's, a, it's actually an Android shortcut through fully, I can still come here and I can open Sonos or Spotify or whatever. And I can go back home and this is back to the main screen and of course like so many other people I'm using fully kiosk browser I still need to get the license I know I don't have the plus features activated don't yell at me everybody already yells at me I know I just need to pay the five bucks and stop being a cheapskate um, but there it is so then with fully it goes to a screensaver after I think I've got it set for 10 minutes of inactivity um, which will give me a little dashboard with the weather and then one of my Google pictures, Google Photos albums. Um, so there it is. Like usual, this video was about three times as long as I expected it to be. And I don't have a tripod, so I'm holding it, so I apologize for the shaky video. Uh, one day maybe I'll actually get some gear and I can make some decent videos, but there it is.